Hey everyone, this will be a quick introduction to the user interface for Fair2D Terrain Tool. Uh, so first thing I'm going to show you is how to create a, a terrain object. If you go to Game Object, Create Fair 2D, you'll have a couple of options here, Physical Terrain and Decorative Terrain. Uh, the only difference between these is that one has a collider and one doesn't. You can also use Control T to do this. Um, once you're here, you have a couple of choices, like which material would you like to use? You have a list of recent materials, which everything that you've used, it will just rank it in order most recent to least recent. If you don't have anything in this list, you can also choose one from your project from this list here. Uh, so pick one, confirm it, and you'll have a terrain object in your scene. Um, from here, we've got uh, a couple of things that are important to see. Oh, obviously, we have the path interface in the scene. We also have a scene bar up top that gives us some extra information. And then we have a component for more advanced settings. So I'll show you the path user interface first. All right, so obviously, you can just grab these points, move them around. Um, there's also, when you hover over certain areas, it uh, allows it shows some additional buttons so you can see here we can create additional points um, we've also got these scale handles that allow you to scale the edge a little bit uh, we have override edge override handles which allow you to say um, like i want this one to be a top edge always or i want this to be always a right edge and so that'll override the automatic direction determination um, you can also if you hold down alt Alt will let you reset handles, or it will let you delete control points. So that's really handy. You can also hold down Shift to add points instead of using these uh, midpoint buttons. I usually use the, the Shift for um, most of my editing. Uh, you can also do this with multiple uh, control points at the same time. You can see here, if you just drag select, um, then you can scale both of them at the same time, or if you have more than one edge selected, you can change both of these at the same time, or you can reset them all at the same time, etc., etc., uh, which is cool. This is a, a pretty fast interface for doing things. Um, I think you'll find it quite easy to use after a little while. Another thing that you can do, and this is new in, in Fair 2D 2.0, if you hold down C, uh, this will let you change the mode of particular control points. You can see this here is an automatic Bezier curve, and you can see it's generating these control points automatically for you. Um, if you hit C again, this will give you a manually controlled Bezier curve, uh, so you can change that as much as you want. Um, if you want this to be separate instead of locked like it is, you hold down C again and drag one of these handles, and so that gives you separate, more specific control over your Bezier curves, which is really nice. Um, also, uh, there's one more control point type, and this is the circle cap. And you can see here, this gives you uh, kind of a, a perfectly rounded corner. Uh, and this is something that uh, it's a little tricky to do properly with Bezier curves. So this uh, arc corner is, is really useful. Um, but uh, all of those uh, add extra vertices, so be judicious with your use of them. They can inflate the, this file, the scene file size as well as uh, terrain build time. Um, but definitely feel free to use them. They're pretty nice. Uh, all right, so up here at the top, we have the scene bar. So the first thing is uh, show help, and this is on by default. It just gives you some of the, the easiest shortcuts right off the bat. Um, we have a couple of snapping options here, snap global, local relative. Uh, global snaps to world space units, and so this is, makes it really easy for you to line things up with other control points on other terrains. Uh, local snaps relative to the origin, and relative just is more like Unity's default behavior, snaps relative to where you first started moving the control point from. Um, I have it default to snap global because I feel that's the most useful one, but uh, feel free to change that up. Uh, smart snap is also uh, kind of useful. It can be used to snap to um, other control points. You can see here a little bit of snapping. Um, and so if you have a lot of 90 degree angles and stuff like that, this can be super useful for you. Um, another one here, uh, segment lock mode. So this is uh, 
a cool feature, and it lets you override the sprite of a particular piece. You can see here, like I have two different sprites for my edge. Um, the This is an automatic, this is the first one, and then this is the second one. So that's really, really good for, uh, like if you have some specific pieces that you want in specific areas, or if you have uh, some art that just lends itself really well to more control, like this can be uh, useful for you. Uh, you'll notice it is not on these other edges. These edges do not have multiple body segments defined in the terrain material. So it's not available for those. Um, uh, also, these are just display options. Uh, one, two, three is the most useful. This will give you the index number of each particular vertex. Um, and so you can see that here in control points. Uh, you can do a, a quick look up and say, oh, number one, that's this one right here. OK. Um, there's also show highlight, which is Unity's default mode of indicating selection. It's a little redundant in this case. Um, show colliders. This gives you uh, an idea of what the colliders look like on your terrain. So it can be useful to have this on to make sure that just um, everything is, is lined up correctly and you've got the corners that you need and nothing's going wrong with that. Uh, everything's as expected. Uh, but uh, you, you can turn it off if it's getting a little too cluttered and you've, you've got everything correct after a certain point. All right. Uh, more. Um, over here we have the inspector. And so this, this inspector is, uh, I, I cut it down a lot since last version. I moved a lot of attributes over to the terrain materials. Uh, so this is a lot more lean and a little nicer than it used to be. First one here, we have the path data. So this is um, information about the path itself. Um, you can see here if we expand this. This is closed and open. Um, it's not super important in this case. And in fact, I think I have it disabled on this particular type of terrain. Um, but split distance can be important for um, these parts right here, the, the curves. So if we go into shaded wireframe, you'll be able to see this a little bit better. So if I change split distance up to 0.5 or something like that, this gives you extra detail on your curves. So, so if your curves are um, like too detailed, you can turn this up a little bit and this will save you some extra vertices, some extra scene space, um, some extra processing power. But if you're not getting enough, if your scene is a little bit um, smaller or something like that, then a smaller split distance can uh, help you out there. Um, center position, this will basically uh, center the origin of the object in the middle of the terrain. You can see that there. And uh, so that's that's helpful. Um, we've also got multiple different modes. So previously, this used to be a single option. I've changed it so that this is now two. So we have a fill mode and an edge mode. So the fill is this part here, the interior of the path. And right now, it's set to normal. If I change this to invert, you can see it goes outside of the path instead of inside of the path. Or uh, in some cases, you may just want none. Um, it depends on exactly what you're trying to achieve, um, but it gives you some options. Same thing with the uh, edge modes. We have normal, invert, and none. So if we invert the edges, you can see it switches to an interior sort of uh, layout. And if we do none, it'll just be the fill by its lonesome. Um, and with both of these, we have some options here. Z offset, I recommend that you leave this the same, um, unless you're doing something particularly fancy. Uh, this is the how far back the fill goes from the edges. It's useful for um, fixing Z sorting, but 0 0.05, I recommend leaving it there. Uh, if you want to shift your uh, terrain fill around, you can use the UV offset to adjust this. Uh, this can be useful if you have a, a more complex fill material and you need it to line up with something. Um, after that, we have interior grid verts. And uh, if I switch to wireframe, you'll be able to see this a lot better. So interior grid verts, this adds extra vertices inside of the mesh. And this is really useful for um, if you're doing mesh painting or if you're doing vertex lighting. It adds extra space on the mesh for calculating data. So this is the only way to get good vertex lighting on a mesh like this or have room to paint on if you're doing vertex painting. 
with the edge modes, we don't have a lot of options here, but we've got uh, a slant amount. So you can see here, this will shift the edges just a little bit. And this can be really useful for giving uh, a bit of a parallax effect. Uh, I don't recommend turning this up a lot. It can be um, a little bit of a, a distortion and you can see some uh, bits at the corners that don't look super great all the time. But a little bit of this can go a long ways. Uh, so give it a try um, and see if it fits your project. Use only top edge. This is uh, a little more useful for um, very specific types of terrain, but it basically just says like only take the top edge from the material. Don't use any corners, no splitting or anything like that. Um, that's really good. Um, down in here we've got vertex color. Every vertex on a fair 2D object has some coloring going on. So you can use this for really quick tinting, just like uh, push it into the foreground or the background or something like that. Uh, give it a little bit of a variety. Um, we've also got uh, a couple of other options, gradient and distance gradient. Distance gradient is really cool. And um, got to pair this with interior grid verts because otherwise you don't have enough data. Um, so let's try a nice black gradient. Yeah, so this is um, this is a really nice way to add atmosphere to your, your game. You can just kind of um, make it vanish off to, to black as it gets further away from the edge. Um, a really nice way to, to transition into emptiness or something like that. Uh, the regular gradient also does the same thing, but this is more angle-based instead. So you can do um, lighting effects, like say like light uh, darkness over in this corner or something like that. <clears throat> Um, preserve vertex color is useful for doing vertex painting or light baking or something along those lines where you don't want the uh, data to go away. So if you're doing painting and you want to change the terrain, normally it'll just overwrite all the data that you have, but with this option on, it'll do its best to preserve the, the vertex colors that are already there. So that can be very useful. Um, Another one here, uh, pixels per unit. This is a really good one to know about. This is equivalent to um, Unity's sprites pixels per unit. It's the same idea. It just tries to uh, fill one unit of Unity with this many pixels. So whatever your per pixel re per unit resolution is, uh, put that in here. And you can also change the default for that in preferences. Um, Fair2D has a couple of preferences here, and it has a default pixels per unit. So if you have one that you're trying to stick to in your project, just drop it in here. Um, create tangents is useful if you're doing normal maps. It costs a little bit extra to build, but uh, if you're using normal maps, you kind of need it. Sorting layer and order in layer, these are useful for sorting issues. Um, so in this particular scene, um, Everything on this layer is zero, but if I go up to here, uh, I go in increments of 10. Um, same thing with the stuff in the background. This is a, a negative 10. It's the same thing as Unity sprites as well, so it mixes well with that system. Um, so if you're getting flickering in the scene view or something along those lines, make sure you've got your order and layer options set. For colliders, um, so you, you can see here we've got this defaulted to Polygon 2D. You can switch this to off. Uh, no colliders. Um, there's also edge 2D colliders, or if you're using three-dimensional collision, you can generate a mesh instead. Um, these will generate on start, so it isn't cluttering up the scene, but if you need access to them inside of the editor, you can also say uh, pre-build collider, and that'll give you the, the polygon collider right away. Same thing with the edges and the mesh. It can clutter up your uh, inspector a little bit, um, this will generate a new polygon collider per physics material specified in your terrain material. So uh, this fills up fast. Um, so yeah, that just gives you a quick preview of what it's actually going to look like. Um, or if you want to like set some of these extra settings, edit them. Uh, any A couple of the things that you change in here will get overwritten when you update. So like if I say is trigger, you can see like that's It'll get uh, overwritten pretty fast. So um, there's a couple of things you can set, but if there's an option up here, prefer that. So that's uh, a quick rundown of 
the user interface for Fair 2D. So hopefully you guys enjoy this tool. And uh, I, I know I just finished the uh, 2.0 update, so there's a lot of really nice big changes in this one. And I'm really proud of how this one turned out. So uh, enjoy, guys. Have fun. And let me know if you have any questions or ideas. Uh, I'm always accessible by email, support at symbriocorp.com. You can also uh, hit me up in the comments or something like that. So thanks, guys.